Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. We're back here with our Friday review. Before we get to our Cabral host calls on the weekend, we'd like to end the week right. So we'll be going through all the different updates from the private practice all around the world, our integrative health practitioners, Equal Life, and the Stephen Cabral ecosphere here. I've got a fun announcement from a book that I wrote way back in 2010. I'm going to share a little update on that. Of course, we have our herb of the week. No doubt about it. This is going to be great for or anyone looking to improve their overall uh, female hormonal balance. So I guess women looking to improve their overall female hormonal balance, a uh, little book review. And then I've got two to three research studies that I want to share with you that are a bit of a head scratcher. I've alluded to it in the past. I don't exactly know yet what to make of it. But on this show, what we like to do is we stand biased. We stay open to all information, and then we decide what is best for us and our family based on all evidence to date. So we're going to check that out. Uh, you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. And again, we won't jump to any conclusions, but as we always say, eat like, you, like your life depends on it. All right, so let's get right into it. Always opening the show with the updates as to what's going on. And I'll tell you right now that, and again, this is episode 2240, stephencabral.com forward slash 2240. Head on over there for all the takeaways and all of the links from today's show. So tons and tons of travel over this month and so all of March and over April. We know, again, I've shared this before. I'll talk about it in just a few minutes. This is my big birthday week celebration. And uh, and because of that, again, we've got a lot going on over at Equal Life and all over uh, IHP, et cetera. But I've had to travel. I've had to travel quite a bit. And the funny thing is, I used to love to travel. I did. I used to love flying all over the country, all over Europe. I uh, flew to Australia for uh, one of our IHP live events. And I always loved it. But the truth is that I basically hit the reset button during the pandemic. And like many other people, my love of travel has certainly taken a nosedive. It really has. Like, I am just not uh, a fan of airports. I'm not a fan of airline travel and all of that. And I guess it just kind of is what it is. But... The thing about travel is that you get to open yourself up to new experiences, new places, meeting people that maybe you've only met online, but you actually get to meet them in the real world. And that is why I still do it. So for me, being able to link up with other uh, colleagues of mine uh, is one of the reasons why I do it. And so I've literally traveled to San Francisco, San Jose, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, San Diego, where else have I? Where else have I been recently? I'm going to Utah, so literally all over, all over the map, right? All over the place. Uh, Texas, of course, uh, and then eventually, uh, we'll we'll see if I end up there. Is uh, is New York City, which I haven't been for years, which is amazing because I used to be in New York. Uh, I would say four or five times a year. So. That's basically where I'm at right now. A lot of travel, a lot of ups and downs, and overall, just not feeling as settled as I was a couple of years ago before the whole pandemic. And so I'm really hoping that towards mid end of this year, that just kind of life settles back out to more normalcy from my normalcy from what I was used to, not not this new normal. And uh, and that's my hope for really this coming year. And, and that's where I'm at, at least mind space wise, head space wise, is that I would love to feel a little bit more settled. Like, okay, we know where we're at right now. We know where we're at with travel. We know where we're at with the world. Uh, and especially if you have children too in school, what, what are all the different school uh, you know, mandates and policies and all these different things too? It's, it's just good to know as a parent as well. So that's where I'm at. Headspace wise, what's going on right now with the Equal Life team? Well, they have something called the Founders Week 
birthday celebration. I happen to be the founder. Uh, it's a company that I, I truly love. It was basically our Boston practice, right? So I had Boston practice for many, many years. And we started helping about, uh, it was again, it was 100% from Boston, people would fly in and obviously most people from Boston, but a lot of people flew in and we would help them with any wellness-based issue they may have. And then word started to get out, which was great. So we started to see more and more people just virtually way back in the day over Skype. Then eventually it started to be more people virtual than people in Boston. We had a big wait list. So we started to bring our labs and our protocols online. And this has now grown to be, which is, again, it's absolutely, I feel very grateful, don't get me wrong, uh, and absolutely phenomenal that we are now running the largest functional medicine integrative health practice in the world. Tens of thousands of people each month come on in and uh, they are using protocols, they're using at-home labs, and they're getting well. That's, that's the whole point. That was always the goal. So the goal wasn't necessarily a wellness center, uh, which I'm very grateful that I did have in two different locations. The goal was to help people. And so we went from helping 20,000 client appointments a year, which again is, I would say, a lot, to now, uh, again, even just with the podcast, but helping 100,000 people a day. And so it's really grown, and, and I'm very, very grateful for that. During this uh, one week in March, uh, the founder's sale, I do love to give deeper, deeper discounts on the things I use every day in my life. So you can see essentially the 10 to 12 products I use every single day. Most of them are daily. Some of them I rotate in and out. Uh, those are all at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. That will direct you to the founder's sale celebration page, along with the Big Five, which is over $1,000 off retail price right now for the Big Five Labs that I run every single year for my birthday, which is why I want to give you that deep discount as well. Remember, I pay for my own labs too. I really do. These, these labs cost money. They're not our labs. You have to be uh, in a health practice, a doctor, a licensed practitioner, sign off in these labs. So that's what we do. And uh, the starter kit. So for those that don't feel the big five is within their investment ability right now, totally understand. I was there myself as well. And so the starter kit for a couple hundred dollars, uh, you can actually get all of your vitamin levels, your mineral levels, your gut testing, heavy metals, and so much more. So again, all the details going on this week while supplies last at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. Check it on out. All right, let's head on over now to the podcast recap for the week. Episode 2236 was our Mindset and Motivation Monday, and it was the best ways to detox your mind. Not to detox your brain, which would be different. That's the organ. We're actually talking about detoxing your mind. Hopefully, you tuned into that show. That was 2236. Uh, episode 2237 was moving beyond macros. I enjoyed, I really enjoyed uh, teaching that show because I know a lot of people are new to the community and they've heard about if it fits your macros diet, they've heard about, you know, increasing your protein, like all these different things and manipulating your macros. But what most people haven't heard about is micros and why micros may influence and do influence your health to a much larger degree. Episode 2238 was five easy allergy tips for spring. I used to be a chronic allergy sufferer. Now I'm allergy free. You can check out all the different tips at stevencabral.com forward slash 2238. And yesterday's show on our training Thursday was five minute mini workouts and are they the future of exercise? They're actually being coined exercise snacking right now, which is kind of a fun name. And that was episode 2239. You can check that out. All right. Let's get into now our reviews for the week. Um, uh, a lot of people see me wearing this new band and have been wearing it the last couple of weeks. This should be coming next Friday. All right. So this is a new biometric tracking device. Uh, <clears throat> if you've been keeping up with my Instagram stories, I've been talking about it. And, um, and I've got some good things to say about it. I really do. I wasn't expecting wasn't expecting all that much because I've been using biometric devices for well over five years. And, uh, and I can't wait to share this one with you next week. All right. So it should be out next week. But our fun book review or update from a book that I wrote in 2010, I don't even have a copy in this office right now, uh, is called A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. Now, A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength, when I was writing this book, uh, and, and again, I was young writing this book. I was writing it in 2009, finished it in 2010, and I wrote it for the publisher Human Kinetics. <clears throat> and, you know, really enjoying my time as a nutritionist, personal trainer, strength and conditioning specialist, et cetera, et cetera. And I wrote this book because I wanted to have a year's worth of workouts that was basically 
my best stuff. These are the workouts that really work. They work for tens of thousands of clients, and I, I wanted to share that with people. And so Human Kinetics approached me, and they said, would you like to write a book on this? I said, yes. I didn't know that they were going to title it A Man's Guide for Muscle and Strength. It's for both men and women, but again, as publishers, they get to choose whatever they want. I was very new to the game, and uh, and so we'll just say, uh, in terms of uh, a book deal, I was taken advantage of to a, to a great degree. Uh, this is funny because it's not really that funny, but I learned a lot. And from that book... We sold, and this is a lot for a fitness book, you know, for a niche fitness book, over 25,000 copies within the first year or so, which is great. You know, happy with that. A lot of people benefiting from it. But what happened was when I sold the, when, when I should say the Rain Barrel Effect debuted in uh, about three years ago, then people started to get this book too because they saw that I wrote it on Amazon, which is also great. The funny thing is, A Man's Guide to Muscle uh, and Strength, I've made zero dollars from, zero dollars. I still promote it because it's a year's worth of workouts and they're some of the best workouts that I've ever created. And it's all there and it's like $14.95. I literally make zero dollars from that. And here's why. And again, I'm just sharing this with you. There's literally no hard feelings because I learned from this. So as a publisher, they tack on all of these expenses and you don't receive any money. Usually you get like maybe like a dollar a book, maybe $2 a book. <clears throat> but you don't receive any money until all of those expenses that they've added on have been paid back, which is kind of hilarious. They do this in the record industry as well. So if you hear about these artists that are really popular or whatever it might be, and they're not making any money, well, it's because their record label uh, basically tacked on all these expenses that they need to pay off. They need to pay through. So I didn't know that. So when I, and I'm just sharing with you a little backstory. This is what the Friday review is all about. It's kind of, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's an eclectic show here, but I give you a lot of insights into my life. So with the rain barrel effect, I said, okay, Mm, I learned that lesson. And what I want to do is I want to share this information freely because this book right here that I'm going to share with you, this, is, this wasn't even the point to the book, to, to the debut here today, but it's, it's getting to it though, is that I wanted to be able to own the information. I don't own the information anymore in a man's got a muscle and strength. They own that. They own the book. That, that's theirs. I can't use it in any way. It's their book. Interesting, right? I didn't even title the name of the book. I wasn't allowed to title it, which was crazy. <clears throat> so I wrote uh, The Rain Barrel Effect, and I said, you know what? I'm going to self-publish this through Amazon. And I'm going to do that because I'm going to sell the book, and I'm going to donate 100% of all the money to charity. Because in my opinion, I do this podcast, and I write books for free, essentially. Because my goal is to teach that information, which has helped me so much in my life. I always thought that if you just simply teach what you know works and you give as much as you can, good will always come to you as well. I've always felt that. So with the rain barrel effect, I try to charge as little as I can for that. It's like $9.95. And 100% of all the profit made from that book goes to charity. So that's why I'm not looking to make um, any money from this sale, even of the a Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. It's going to the publisher, which is totally fine. The goal, though, is to get information to people that I believe will change their life. So how did all of this come about then? Why am I talking about A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength when I wrote it in 2010, 12 years ago? Here's why. Since the rain barrel effect came out and it gave this book a new surge of life, it's actually started to jump again in popularity, which is great. And so much so that they translated it into Chinese. So if you see this book I'm holding up right here, if you're watching this on YouTube, great. We appreciate you uh, as a subscriber or viewer of the Cabral Concept. But you can literally see that every single page in the back cover is all in Chinese. So inside the book... All the photos are the same, but all written in Chinese. And it was amazing because I received this book. I didn't even know. Like, there was literally a letter that said, your book has been translated uh, into, and I believe it was simplified, Chinese. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact, you know, this person. I'm like, okay, I didn't even know. So again, when you don't own your book, so if you're ever thinking about writing a book, if you don't own your book, they can do whatever they want with it. Now, I'm very happy that it was translated in Chinese. I have no problem with that because, again, the goal is to reach as many people as possible with good information. And hopefully this serves some people. So kind of fun. Just wanted to share this with our community. And uh, I don't know where you could pop, where you could purchase this book in Chinese, but I'm sure it is uh, on Amazon's website 
uh, in China. All right, that is that with that. Thank you for humoring me. Let me share that with you here today. We're going to go over our herb of the week. Our herb of the week is black cohosh. Black cohosh is something that we've been using in our practice now for about a decade. It's used in both Ayurvedic medicine as well as traditional Chinese medicine, and it is used for typically female hormones. One of the reasons why it's used with female hormones is because it does have phyto estrogenic properties. That means that it can actually help to boost, as I would say, an exogenous form of estrogen when you put in the body. So it doesn't necessarily increase your own estrogen levels. However, it actually can bind to estrogen receptors and help women who have lower levels of estrogen. So they might be going through menopause, went through menopause, or have low sex hormones due to high levels of stress, et cetera. So this product has been extensively studied. Black co-wash is an herb that's been studied for PCOS. It's been studied for infertility. It's been studied for hot flashes. Uh, it has been studied for low mood, depression, uh, menopause symptoms, uh, what else? I said PCOS for fibroids, for uh, premenstrual syndrome, for premenstrual dysphoric disorder, from menstrual cycle dysregulation. Uh, it can help improve overall sleep, not just because of the hot flashes or nighttime evening sweats, but also with overall calming of the central nervous system and may also help with weight. But one of the most interesting things that I found about black cohosh is that it's more like an adaptogen than it is a phytoestrogen. And here's why. Black cohosh is often used even in progesterone support products because black cohosh can actually increase estrogen. So basically like receptor sites, it can use act as a phytoestrogen in some parts of the body, but decrease estrogen sensitivity in other parts of the body. So pretty amazing. Again, nature still is trying to teach us so much. We have to continue to listen, continue to study. Uh, but this is a product that I've been using, again, in my practice for quite some time. We use it in our product called Estrogen Support right now. Uh, many, many women using that uh, to boost estrogen levels, whether it be uh, Premenopause, perimenopause, or postmenopause to get benefits from that. So that is our herb of the week. Uh, if you want to check out all the details on uh, black cohosh, I'll link up a couple of studies here today, episode 2240. And uh, I can't link up the nutritional supplement, but you can always search that at stephencabral.com forward slash shop and just type in estrogen support. All right. We've got three studies for the day. Uh, again, I wanted to bring these to you. We're going to keep an open mind here. Because this, you know, again, let me just preface it with this. So um, I've been vegan multiple times in my life, not just for a couple of weeks, but many, many months at a time. Um, and, and I did that for spiritual reasons. I did it for um, health reasons. I did it to uh, learn more about it through self-experimentation. And although I am predominantly plant-based, meaning I am plant-based all day long until dinner, and then at dinner, I have some type of either meat or poultry or wild fish or eggs once a week, and, and sometimes it's a vegan-based dinner as well. So I'm predominantly plant-based. However, I do eat some red meat, and I've never said that I don't. <clears throat> I just choose healthy versions of it. I support local farmers uh, locally, and we get grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Uh, one of the ones that we're doing right now is actually organ meat. I'll talk about that more in the future. Uh, and that has some of the organs, about 20% ground in with the grass-fed beef, and we can make burgers out of that. We can make meatballs out of it. We can make taco meat out of it. And my daughters uh, don't even know it's in there, and that's a great way for them to get a little bit of organ meat in there too, which is very nutritious for the body. Uh, of course, we do some pastured chicken. We do wild fish, really, really easy. But today is on red meat. So again, I wanted to say that, I want to preface that because I do eat some red meat. There's no doubt about it. But again, as much as that I enjoy red meat, I feel good when I eat it. The problem is there's just so many studies showing the potential issues along with eating red meat. Now, most of it, because I've dug deep on this, I really have, because what happens is this. This is most people in the industry, and again, I just, uh, I just want us, if you're a health practitioner out there, I want us to be honest with ourselves, because there's so much research that says it's a risk. It's, let's just put it that way. It's a risk to eat a lot of red meat. 
And the factor seems to be about uh, 50 grams or more, which is about two slices of bacon or about a palm size uh, piece of red meat uh, or like a, a couple slices of uh, deli meat. That would be it. That's about 50 grams. And it goes up exponentially every 50 grams <clears throat> all the way to about basically 150 grams is where it's been measured. And it seems about one and a half times per week or more seems to be the real sticking point. So it looks like if you're trying to err on the side of caution, you would eat it once a week at most. Um, I probably have it, I would say I probably have it twice a week right now. In the past, I definitely I definitely didn't eat it at all. I eliminated it for years of my life. Uh, but again, I do feel pretty good when I eat it. I'm not, not going to deny that. Uh, it's a very rich food, which means it has a lot of nutrients in it. There's other reasons for the energy boost, and that's from other things like norepinephrine, but we'll talk about that in the future. Uh, what I do want to say is this is that, uh, actually, I can't get deep into the level as to which humans would have been able to eat it. I just want to share with you some studies. That's all, okay? So this is processed and unprocessed red meat consumption and the risk for type 2 diabetes. So essentially, it showed that um, they compared uh, groups of control group, none, lowest intake group, which was, uh, I'll give that to you in just a moment, uh, below the 150 grams, and then high intake, intake group. And it showed that the risk for type 2 diabetes mellitus risk increased by 27% for the processed meat group and increased by 15% in the unprocessed meat group. This is important because typically we think about all the bad things from red meat happening because of like, uh, I don't even know, taking in like processed deli meat and, and bacon and things like that that we've spoken about before. But, and that's much more of a risk. It shows it. It is. It's, it's almost double the risk. But there's still a 15% increased risk for type 2 diabetes with red meat. Now, this might blow a lot of people's minds because they're like, well, there's no carbs in red meat. How is this possible? I've explained that at other shows. So definitely go back, check out my previous shows on that. So that's one study. And I'll link all of these up for you to go deeper on as well. So the second study is uh, red meat consumption in all cause and cardiovascular mortality. And this was done in the UK. So <clears throat> this one's interesting as well. Uh, this is done at less than, so they have a group, the lowest end red meat intake, which was one and a half times or less per week. And the other red meat group was three times per week or more. So this is an interesting study because it showed that, um, I'll, I'll just read it to you. The, there was a decrease in red meat consumption and an increase in the consumption of poultry or which, okay. So if you were less than one and a half times of red meat per week, you had a less than, you had a nine to 16% lower risk for cardiovascular disease and uh, cardiac mortality. So basically if you did less than one and a half times per week of red meat, your risk went down by 9 to 16%. The thing about this study is it didn't show that red meat was detrimental to other all-cause mortality uh, besides cardiovascular heart attacks and stroke, essentially, which, again, that's that's not good. That's the leading cause, two, two top causes of uh, death. <coughs> but what I also want to share with you is this, is that it, so it did increase, decrease all the different... Um, causes of mortality, but it did with cardiovascular and blood or blood pressure stroke as well. So that was an interesting one that I found there. And the, one of the reasons why I found that study interesting is that it didn't matter if people are doing other healthy things in their life. If they consume red meat more equal to three times or more per week, it still caused that increase in cardiovascular mortality. All right. Um, I linked up another one on uh, dietary red meat consumption and the, institute, and the incident of type 2 diabetes, showing that at 50 grams, uh, it's going up incrementally, um, and then at 100 grams, and then at 150 grams, it continues to increase, essentially stating the more red meat you eat, the higher your chance for type 2 diabetes. The last one is that just two slices of bacon a day or just two slices of deli meat a day or just a little bit of processed meat, again, this is processed meat, uh, it increases your chance of colon cancer, colorectal cancer, by 18%. Now, about 6.6 6 out of every 100 people will get colon cancer, colorectal cancer. This increases that chances by 18%. And so again, I, th I think that these studies are worth thinking about. That's it. Because what, I'm, what I always say is this, is that, again, what you put into your body by far and away is the most important thing you're doing for your overall health. 
That's it. That's like by far and away, it's the most important thing. So we have to look at that first. And if you're someone that enjoys red meats, and I would say that I enjoy eating red meat. I enjoy a good burger. I enjoy a good steak. Um, I like bacon. I don't eat bacon that often because it's just, it is a processed meat. And the other thing is, and I'll be doing more research on this too, because a lot of this seems to be the cooking process. Believe it or not, and I have to go deeper into this and there's not a lot of research on it. It seems that cooking red meat is what seems to be a big part of its to its detriment is that the cooking process brings out a lot of the harmful effects of red meat. So when you process the meat, it's essentially cooked at a higher heat. And then of course, if you're charring it, if you're pan frying it, that's that's just going to make it that much worse. Now, it'd be interesting to see if these things, uh, get, nobody's, I don't think a lot of people are eating raw meat. Some people are. <laughs> I've seen them online. Um, but I don't know that it would have the same detrimental effects. Again, I keep my mind open to these things. So what am I saying with all this? Like, What does it mean? For me, it means that I am definitely not going over twice a week of red meat. And I, I need to really think about for myself because I don't want to make this more complicated for family as well because this certainly affects men than it, more so than it does women is that uh, I don't eat any processed meat. So like that's first, oh, that's just good. So I'm talking about even with grass-fed, Am I okay with once or twice a week? Well, I think we're okay with once a week. Um, I wouldn't go really above that. That's where I'm leaning to right now. Again, if you if you believe that eating grass-fed beef every single day is is the right thing to do for you, it's it's your body and it's a, your choice. Like I'm not. I'm just trying to say, let's think about this. Like let's look at the overall picture. And, uh, and see if this does matter. I do believe exercise matters. I truly believe that. I think that um, there's a lot to be said for that. I know that particular study, they didn't look at what they were doing for exercise. It was just an overall questionnaire on that. So there, there's something to be said for that. I think your overall, uh, probably your BMI does matter or your overall, maybe even body fat percentage ratio. If you don't want to look at BMI, you can look at maybe body fat. Um, and I, I think the quality of the meat does matter. I also... I also want to go deeper. I've done a lot of research on this. Like, would elk meat or would venison matter over beef? You know, they, maybe there could be less of an inflammatory risk factor there. So there's a lot that goes into this. I just don't want to think that eating red meat every single day is probably a healthy one for you to do. Again, I would err on the side of caution. I would make a bet like your life depends on it. And there's a whole lot of research that shows that as you start to go above one and a half times per week, there could be a real cost benefit ratio there. So hopefully today's podcast got you thinking that's the goal. Let me know in the comments what you think. I am open again to hearing all sides of the argument. I am here just like you. We're all learning along the way. And uh, hopefully I've been able to share a few helpful tips. If I have, feel free to share them by sending the link stephencabal.com forward slash 2240. Take care, everyone. And I'll talk with you tomorrow on the Cabral House Calls. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.